two, three, four. Hey there, electricians. Welcome to the Ideal Power Master Series, where we're gonna be sharing the most important tips and tricks for those of you out there in the field. Now today's class, we're gonna be talking about one of the most useful and powerful tools that you can have in your toolkit as an electrician, and that's a circuit tracer. Now inside the walls of all homes and buildings, there's those complex systems, of cables and electrical conduits, all of which are susceptible to numerous electrical problems that you as an electrician are going to have to fix. Now having a circuit tracer and knowing how to use one will make your job so much easier and more importantly, safer. To walk us through just how to use one, we've got master electrician and three-time champion of the Ideal Nationals competition, Greg Anlicker. Not to mention Jeff Carter, an electrician and 30-year veteran contractor with tons of experience in the trades to show us just how to use the equipment. Out in the field, there's certainly a lot of different circuit tracer tools that are available, but today we're gonna to be using one from Ideal called the Shore Trace Circuit Tracer. Uh, Greg, tell us a little bit about what this tool actually does. So this is an awesome troubleshoot troubleshooting tool. It consists of a transmitter, which I'm holding, and a receiver that Jeff has. Uh, we can use this to find faults on shorted circuits, splicing errors, uh, the route that a conduit is taking behind a wall, the route that a non-metallic is taking, BX, whatever it is, we can test all those through a wall, finished wall. We can find conduits even in, even in the ground. Wow, that sounds really handy. So Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about how it actually works? Yeah, it's a, it's a transmitter receiver setup. So basically the receiver is gonna pick up whatever we have this connected to. That's what we're looking for. So when you turn it on, it's gonna, it's gonna make its signal and it's gonna ping out. So when it pings out, that's telling you, you either need to tone it down or you're gonna pick everything up. So there's, two, there's different sensitivity levels. Yeah, there's two coils in it. So the one coil that you're, you're actually trying to find the problem in the wall, that, that's gonna see every box if you don't tone it down. Got so, it. Now we can do breakers with this as well, yes? Right, there's a, a coil in the nose. So if, if let's say you come across the house, uh, somebody else did the work and nobody marked the panel, you can very simply walk around the house, uh, plug this into the the wall and go around and find all your home runs. Mark. And I can imagine how this can save all kinds of time just trying to troubleshoot invisible problems. Uh, let's, uh, let's try it out, shall we? Okay, let's do it. All right. All right, scenario number one. We just showed up at this house and there is no panel schedule whatsoever. We have no idea what breaker any of these receptacles are on. Let's see how fast we can figure this all out, Jeff. Okay, let's, let's do it. Let's start at the far end. Plug in and let me know if you're energized. I'm energized, Greg. He has a lightning bolt showing he's energized. I'm gonna take it down to the search low function because I'm searching for breakers. And I will start scanning the breakers, looking for the highest number possible. That side, the highest I got was 74. Over here, the highest is 18. So not even close. Breaker number one's gotta be that receptacle. My lightning bolt's out. Okay, perfect, that was easy. Let's move over one. I'll leave that circuit off. Right here. I'm hot. Okay. Scanning again, looking for the highest number. There we are, circuit number six. You die? I'm out, okay. lightning bolt's out. Our third receptacle we're searching for. As you can see, as I scroll through the panel, I'm using the sensor pointing out the front. You do not want to hold it this way on the panel like you would do if you were searching for a fault in the wall. So you're gonna point it directly at the breaker and the outside edge of the breaker is where Wire. your termination is. So it's gonna be their easiest spot to get that reading at. That's why I'm scrolling where I am. Here we are again, breaker number four. Here we go. Okay. The sure trace can be used on energized and de-energized circuits. In this scenario, we'll be at a de-energized panel trying to track a non-metallic cable that got damaged somewhere during construction. We have an outlet with no power, and we're guessing that maybe it got a cut or a break or a screw in it somewhere. We're gonna try to find that spot. Okay. Uh, let's first start by removing the hot and the neutral for this problem okay. circuit. As Jeff clips these leads on, they are not polarity sensitive in any nature. He just clips one to each wire. They'll work the same either way. 
lights are on. Okay, I started friends. beeping, so we're seeing each other. I'm gonna leave the panel. There we are, I'm hitting the 91 is my highest number. As I scan up and down, just looking for the highest number. As it drops, I know I can start going the other direction again. So if this was a, a kitchen environment where people had a wire that was controlling a circuit that's broken, rather than rip everything off the wall and make a big mess, what we're doing is trying to pinpoint the actual spot where the wire is and cut just that spot out to keep the cost of the drywall repair down. It's like you're really close right there. Yeah. Now it's... There we go, we're, drop, we're dropping off real quick at that, at that same elevation. I'll come back and there we climb up in a hurry. Right about here. I'd say it's right there. Okay, right here. I'll be nice to the drywallers and try to cut a somewhat square hole for them to patch. See how we did? Uh -huh, look what we found. There's our problem, problem break right there. Who knows what hit it, but we nailed it right on. All right, in this scenario, we'll be working on a de-energized panel again, trying to find a shorted circuit. Uh, if you got a continuity meter, you wanna go ahead and scan through and see if you can find which one has a short. One more time, let's check these to make sure it's not the neutral. Okay. We're clipping on to our two shorted wires. If we were to grab the neutral and there was no short in that, we wouldn't be able to find this fault. So Greg set the transmitter up, energized it. He's setting his receiver up now, keeping it away from the antenna. And the highest numerical value is what he's looking for. We have a 04, 05. It should ping out a lot higher than that. In the past, we would have to, yeah, there it is right here. So in the past, what we would have to do is pull all these devices out. Uh, it would probably take a couple hours, what we just did in a couple minutes. So it's a big savings. All right, let's open up, see what we got going on. I can see it already. See if you can snap it off there. Right off. I think I got it stuffed back there safe now. Check those wires again. Nothing. Nothing. All right. Button it up. In this situation, we will again be working on a de energized panel and we have a problem with these two arc vault breakers. Both of them will not hold. Oftentimes, when you have arc vault breakers, the problem is gonna originate around the neutrals. So if I was you, I would, put, I would start by testing maybe neutrals. Yes. See if we have continuity or... All right, I'll check it. Yep, that's what it is. It's the All right, neutrals. let's lift them off and see if we still have that continuity. Okay. Bottom one's on the bottom. Still got it. So clip it on to the two neutrals that he just pulled off, the two arc fault breakers. I'll turn my transmitter on, turn my receiver on. As you can see, they're talking to each other. I'll turn it down a few notches and I'll start looking for the highest reading I can find. That's gonna be where that splice error occurs at. Highest I've got on a device is 35. There we are. Things it up. 95. 
Let me keep it keep it there. Let me let me okay. just to take it. See it's gone. All right. Let's see what's going on in here. So we know we have a short on our neutrals. So more than likely, a couple neutrals got tied together that shouldn't be. And we have multiple circuits coming to this box. So what we should find in there is, is two bundles of neutrals. Yep, there we have it, Jeff. Yep. All our neutrals are tied together. We should have two bundles there. Yep. Greg, Jeff. Thank y'all so much. What an amazing amount of work that y'all were able to troubleshoot in such a short period of time. Having that circuit tracer and knowing how to use it really makes all the difference, doesn't it? Now, tell us, is there anything else that you could use this technology for in the circuit tracer to solve with problems that we didn't really cover today? Oh, it's an amazing tool and it, the, the list is endless. But I mean, we, I found a uh, copper water pipe seven feet down. Uh, we trace out uh, the parking lot lights to see which way they're going when we're gonna cut the ground. So, I mean, it does what you ask it to do. No doubt. Well, you guys are definitely the pros. So much to learn. We'll have to review all this uh, stuff that y'all showed us so many times. Thank y'all again for joining us today. All right. Well, we hope that you found this episode of Ideal Power Masters to be illuminating. If you're just starting out in your career as an electrician, we're with you at every step of your journey. You can watch this episode of Power Masters and more at idealind.com slash powermasters.